Welcome to December. As promised for December, I'm going to dig into the AT&T PC6300 that I acquired over the summer, and it's got some neat stuff inside. I'm really excited. I'm really excited for this. This is going to this is going to be fun. In other news, I have finally sorted out the audio problems that I have been having with my recordings. And it comes down to with the blue Yeti microphone that I have, when it's connected over USB to a Linux computer, there are two interfaces presented. One of them is microphone, Yeti blue stereo microphone, and the other one is digital input SPDIF, Yeti blue stereo microphone. If you pick the digital input SPDIF one, you will get crap audio. It just, it, unless you are speaking at public library kind of volume, it just peaks all the time and is a mess. But if you pick the other interface, it's fine. And it does what you would expect it to do. I don't know. Anyway, problem solved. Moving on. With that out of the way, let's dig into that thing. The things that make this PC6300 interesting on the inside and what definitely make it serious weird stuff, ironically, start with what's on the outside or maybe at least what's not on the inside. When I purchased this, it had both of these monitors with it. And these are both bespoke AT&T monitors that they made or rebadged from Olivetti, however you want to look at it, uh, specifically for the PC6300 series. Now, this monitor has the same connector as the black and white monitor that I have with the other PC6300, but it's definitely a, a different monitor. I'm going to turn it around a little bit here. So this is the CRT318H, and it's completely different on the back, a different form factor. It has a power switch on it, contrast and brightness. This is the color version of the other monitor that I have. And the black and white monitor is powered through this cable, but the color version has a separate power input. Okay, so let's... I mean, that's, that's pretty cool on its own because now I have the monochrome monitor. Uh, I actually don't remember if it's black and white. What color is, is the phosphorus on that? Oh, we'll get back to that. Uh, and then also the color one. But then there's this monitor. And notice this. It's a completely different kind of connector. And obviously, this monitor is not going to plug into the same video card that this monitor plugs into. That is for sure. Okay, so that's the first bit of what's kind of cool and weird and special about this computer. There was another thing that's not inside here that I got at the same time as this computer, and I'm going to take a look at that now as well. Now, in with the pile of AT&T actual computers and electronics and the manuals and some other kind of neat things that I found, there was this box that uh, says, I don't know which way it's going to be up, I think this way, um, 1024 HP graphics board. So I assumed... This was some kind of HP thing, but when you're at estate sales, always look in the boxes. So I popped it open, and this is the same kind of graphics board. Note the matching connector. I guess it goes this way. This is the same graphics board that's in the other uh, PC6300 that I have. The thing that's interesting about 
the PC6300 is there's actually two boards in it. One is the real motherboard that's in the bottom of the computer and then mounted flipped around the other way is a second board that's basically a passive backplane. And the graphics board bridges between the two. So the 6300 uses an 8086, so it has a 16-bit bus. This is the regular 8-bit ISA part of the bus. And then this is the extra 8 bits of just data. To, this connects through the graphics board and to some of the other slots have the, the ability to use 16-bit data path. So if this is out here <laughs> and we have a monitor with a different weird connector, what's in there? Well, there's only one way to find out. Pop this lid off here, which is just sometimes a hassle. Get that out of the way. Now, here's where it gets cool. So it's going to be a little bit hard to see. I don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera very well, but this is where the graphics board normally would be. And instead, what's here is just a passive board that's just bridging between the actual motherboard down below and this essentially uh, passive backplane up here. Um, now what's up here, let's see, it looks like all that's up here is the hard disk controller, which is normal. The floppy controller is on the motherboard. And if I'm not mistaken, the cable snakes around somehow but there's two boards in this and they're both pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one out. So this is the graphics board and, and it has the, uh, the connector from, for that other monitor. And as far as I'm able to tell, this is some kind of high resolution monochrome board. I believe it will do up to 800 by 600 in monochrome in graphics modes. So it's kind of, you know, judging by the CRTC that's on it. And let's see what's gonna be the RAM on here. Is this just the RAM? Is it just SRAM? Now, here's the RAM across the top here. Oh, and it actually, so if these are all the RAM chips, two, four, six, eight, eight, so, yeah, so it actually uses DRAM, which is interesting. Uh, so it's some kind of Hercules-ish graphics card with a special monitor to go with it. So that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh. And then, now, the other thing that's cool about this, while I was researching this, I have not been able to find a picture of this card anywhere on the internet. This thing is a ghost. So as far as I know, this and anything else that I upload, this is the only image of this card that exists on the internet. How cool is that? <laughs> I love finding stuff like that. But it gets better. While I was working on the previous video, I had learned about there were memory boards that existed that used the 16-bit extension down here. If I can pop this out without breaking it but I could never find anything about them except that they existed. Well, they exist. And here it is. As far as I know, this is the only image of this board that exists on the internet. Even better, I have the manual for it. So I'm definitely going to scan that manual and get that uploaded to archive.org. I believe that I have the manual and the software 
for the graphics board. I don't think I have any software for this RAM board. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what RAM this RAM board provides. Because I've taken a peek at the other side, because there's some kind of neat stuff on the other side. And I think the motherboard is fully populated with 640K. So is this like an EMS board? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like there's enough here for a vintage EMS board, but, but maybe. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put this back together and I'm gonna flip it over and we'll take a look at the other side. And then I'm gonna turn it on. I've already turned, spoiler, I've already turned it on. I, it, there's not gonna be smoke, I hope. <laughs> uh, all right, let's put this back together and take a look at the other side. So yeah, a couple interesting things. One, it's got a math coprocessor. I don't know that I've ever seen inside an 8088 or an 8086 computer that has a math coprocessor. I don't think that was a very common upgrade. So here's all of the RAM. Now it's, so these are 264s. So it's possible that this isn't the full 640. I don't remember. I don't remember what kind of RAM chips are in the other one. So it might just be that these are, to get the full 640, you need higher capacity uh, RAM chips here. Um, but then the other interesting thing that made me happy is a previous owner replaced the battery horror show with, it looks like just, a real hack job of an alkaline battery, but you know what? It didn't leak all over the motherboard and destroy it. Although because it's mounted upside down, it would have most likely, I don't know if people remember on the other one of these I have, let's see. So right about here is underneath where the battery is. There's this huge splotch <laughs> underneath where the battery was on that other one that just yeah, it looks horrible. It looks like a splattered egg or something. I don't know. Um, but it's from the battery leaking onto this instead of onto the motherboard. Um, but this is interesting right here. I don't recall the other one being like this. And I don't see anything else particularly unusual here other than that. Okay, well then let's go ahead and flip this over and we'll put it back the rest of the way back together, flip it over, hook up this monitor that's over here out of camera and uh, let's give this a go and, and see how it works. If it works, if it works properly. <laughs> All right, now the moment of truth. Brightness and contrast need some adjustment. Oh, no, it was just. All right, well, that looks good so far. 640K, numeric processor. It's got the Seagate BIOS. Let's see if it'll, if it'll actually boot from this hard drive. Although this does not seem to have powered on, so I don't think it's going to. It would be way louder. <laughs> okay well i think i'll probably leave it there and a next video will be getting this thing to actually boot into dos i will say the text on this yeah no dry sound the text on this monitor looks really nice that is that is very good i mean this is this is not a monochrome monitor so this is I don't know, some some better sort of, of physical display being driven by Hercules graphics 
ish. All right, well, we'll we'll dig more into this and play with it more next week. I should be able to do a couple more December videos this month to to kind of make up for last month, maybe. <laughs> Well, I consider that a pretty nice success. It turns on cool stuff inside. Like, yeah, that was, I was so stoked when I found it and I took a peek inside of it and saw all that goodness in there. And I was like, yes, this, this is why you go out on these treasure hunts. <laughs> um, so over the next coming weeks, I'm going to take additional pictures of a bunch of those, of those two rare boards. I'm going to try to scan the manuals that I have think that I have complete documentation for both boards um, and I'm going to try to get the um, the software copied off of you know old five and a quarter inch floppy disks and uploaded out somewhere where they can be shared when that finally happens I will put um, I'll probably just update the description in this and maybe put a, a pinned comment to say that yes all of the information is available and there was much rejoicing I'm going to come back to this system in another video and try to sort out what's going on with that hard drive. Cause I could have sworn that when I turned it on at the estate sale that the hard drive came on. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get it booting. I'm probably going to harvest some parts out of it and do some exchanges with between that and the one that I already have, because I think the, the other one that I have is, cosmetically nicer um, and just try to build, you know, one ultimate machine and then have one other machine that I will try to eventually rehome. But that's all coming later in the month and probably on into the new year. But until then, try to remember the good stuff.